everybody. John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about an ingress controller. What is an ingress controller? So if you've been following along, we've talked a lot about Kubernetes recently in these previous videos, and now it's time to explore this thing that we call an ingress controller. All right, so I'm going to write, I'm going to draw a little bit of a diagram up here. So let's say you have, you know, users um, that want to access your application, right? And your application has been deployed um, as a modern application on Kubernetes using containerized microservices and all that stuff, right? So hopefully some of those terms are starting to make a little more sense now. But you've got these users that want to access your application, and this application's been built on a Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to say K8, right, because Kubernetes, if you remember that video. So here's the, uh, you know, here's the K8 cluster, and it, uh, it has, you know, all, all these different resources with nodes and pods and containers and all of those things, right? So an ingress controller, uh, or an ingress, I should say, an ingress just generally is an item, an object, a feature, if you will, that exposes all of the internal resources here within the Kubernetes cluster to external clients or external applications, right? And an ingress controller specifically, it's a, it's a specialized load balancer that manages layer four, layer seven traffic that's entering the Kubernetes cluster um, and also, by the way, it could, it could manage the traffic that's exiting the cluster, right? Um, so I want to mention, as we kind of go through this, a few different terms, and I, wanna, I want to uh, define these. So you've got ingress, uh, and I'll just write them right over here. So um, ingress traffic, and that is traffic that is entering the cluster. So I'll just put a little down arrow. So ingress traffic is traffic that's coming from the outside of the cluster into the cluster, right? And then we have egress. Egress traffic is, if you guessed it, it's traffic that's going from inside the cluster out. So I'm going to put a little up arrow, right? And then we have what's called north-south traffic. So north-south, north-south traffic, right? And north-south traffic is traffic that is entering or exiting the Kubernetes cluster, right? This is also called ingress egress traffic because of this, right? So this is this is uh, makes makes some sense when you look at it. And then the last term that I want to mention is east west traffic. All right, so east west traffic is traffic that is moving among the services, among the you know all of the resources within Kubernetes. So it's going to be this way, right? So um, so east west traffic is you know within the cluster you know, traffic that's that's going among the pods or among the resources within the Kubernetes cluster. All right, so these are important terms that you'll hear, you know, hey, we're talking northwest tra or north-south traffic or whatever. Um, what in the world is that? Now, hopefully, you kind of have an idea of that. All right, so I'm going to draw out a bit more of a diagram here and talk about the ingress controller specifically. Um, but in order to do that, I'm going to start with um, uh, what's called an ingress resource. So this is an ingress right here, and that's a resource within Kubernetes, and I'm going to build out a few things, and we'll kind of talk through them. So as traffic comes into the Kubernetes cluster, it's going to hit this ingress resource and then be uh, routed over to um, a service. So I'll just put service 1 right here or service 2 right here, um, and then within or, or, or I guess behind these services, if you will, are uh, different pods. So I'll just put, you know, here's pods right here, and I'll just say pods, right? And then likewise here are different pods, right? And so these services are then going to be able to load balance or, you know, send traffic to uh, one, one or more of the pods, which if you remember the pods, each pod would, would have a container that, you know, contains uh, one of the microservices of that application. All right, so these services, I just wanted to mention those really quick. A, a Kubernetes service um, is a, it's this abstraction for a deployed group of pods within a Kubernetes cluster, and all of these pods are going to perform the same function, right? And pods, by nature, are what we call ephemeral. Ephemeral meaning that they don't last very long. They're here today, gone tomorrow. They're here now, they're gone in 10 minutes, whatever. So they're coming and going all the time. So instead of Instead of trying to, um, you know, define each of these pods, um, you know, individually because they're constantly coming and going, then we say let's logically abstract what we call a service that these pods perform and pull that up a layer, if you will, 
and then um, and then this service can define the function that these pods are trying to you know to to, to do right. Um, okay, so the uh, this specific group of pods provides a specific function, uh, and then you assign a unique a unique uh, name and IP address to each of these services, right? Okay, so as the traffic comes in, it's going to hit this. Um, it's going to ultimately be you know destined for one of these services, which then is going to use the pods to uh, you know to to do the work, as it were. Okay, so by default. Applications running in these Kubernetes pods or these containers are not accessible from the external network. All right, so these users up here um, they can't get to these pods by default. So the only thing by default uh, that can access a pod is another pod. So that's that east-west traffic, right? Um, and so Kubernetes has a built-in configuration object for HTTP load balancing called ingress, which is what I talked about here just a second ago. And this defines how entities outside of the Kubernetes cluster can connect to the pods that are represented by one or more of these services, right? Um, so when you need to provide external access to your Kubernetes services here, then you create an ingress resource to define the, these connectivity rules, right? And that, that can include things like you know, the, the URI path, maybe the, the service name, there's other information that you can include in, in that ingress resource. Um, but on its own, the ingress resource doesn't really do anything. There's no action. It's just the definition of all those things. So you have to deploy and configure what's called an ingress controller application to implement the rules defined in the ingress resource. So we're going to say um, ingress, I'm going to put it right here, controller. And that's going to implement the rules, um, like I said, to, that, are, that are defined within this ingress resource, right? So I know there's a few different, uh, you know, termina terminology and all that stuff. So I'm going to put this ingress controller right here. So it sits kind of right here on the edge, if you will, right? Okay, the ingress controller is, uh, like I said, it's, it's uh, this specialized load balancer um, that manages the layer 4, layer 7, um, ingress and egress traffic, right? And it can be used to do a number of things. We'll talk about those here in just a second. But some of the things that this ingress controller can do is provide monitoring and visibility. Uh, and so all of the ingress traffic that comes in, it can give you insight into issues that might be impacting your application. Um, so there's monitoring and visibility. Um, the ingress controller accepts the ingress traffic, right? And then it potentially modifies it. It could shape the traffic as it needs to. And then it distributes it to the pods that are running inside this, uh, this cluster, right? And so that's, uh, that's, that's a big part of what Ingress Controller does. Um, the Ingress Controller also monitors the individual pods of a service. So it guarantees intelligent routing um, and it prevents different requests, like from these outside users, it prevents requests to, to be black holes. So let's say you know, maybe a pod, because remember, pods are ephemeral. They're like here here today, gone tomorrow. They're like really, uh, you know, back and forth, whatever. So let's say a user, you know, request comes in and, and it's destined for this specific pod right here. Well, maybe that pod's gone all of a sudden, right? Well, the Ingress controller is going to monitor this service and the pods that are that are backing that service, and it's going to know, oh, that pod's gone. There's, an, there's another pod that just got created. So I'm going to intelligently route or load balance the, uh, you know, the routing of that traffic to the appropriate pod for that service, okay? Um, and then the, uh, the ingress controller can also, I mentioned a second ago, it can also monitor the egress traffic, this, uh, this northbound traffic, right, um, for, as it exits the Kubernetes cluster, and it, and it can implement egress rules to enhance, like, security, those kinds of things, right? Um, so it can do a variety of things. But one of, the, one of the primary uses or use cases, if you will, of the ingress controller is traffic management. So that's the primary function of the ingress controller. So it does load balancing, like I said. Um, it also does tra tra uh, traffic control, like rate limiting, um, health checks, those kinds of things. It also could do traffic splitting, like debug routing or you know, doing A-B testing, that kind of stuff, right? Um, so that's the primary reason that the, or that's the primary function of the ingress controller, but the ingress controller can do many other things. And so some other things to keep in mind on the ingress controller is uh, you can use it to do the monitoring and visibility, which I just I mentioned just a second ago. 
Um, so this, this is a function or a feature that can provide metrics in real time so you can diagnose what's happening right now. Remember in this whole modern application environment, things move very quickly. Um, it's, it's a very automated you know, environment, and so it's like I need to know what's happening right now. Right? So the, the Ingress controller can provide that monitoring and visibility. Um, you can also export metrics to, to visibility tools like there's some like Prometheus or Grafana, those kinds of uh, tools, and then you can plot these values over time. You can try to figure out, hey, when is my traffic going to surge and I need to scale this thing out or you know, other kind of trends like that, right? So monitoring and visibility. Another one, another function of the ingress controller um, is uh, an API gateway, right? So API gateway um, functions could include things like TLS termination, uh, client authentication, the rate limiting uh, that I talked about a second ago, um, the different access control, uh, request routing at layers four through seven. So there's a lot of different functions with API uh, gateways that you can have right here in the, ingress, in, in the ingress controller. And then another one is authentication and single sign-on. So you can enable your users to log in to multiple applications back here within the cluster uh, with a single set of credentials by implementing, implementing single sign-on. You can use things like uh, OIDC, the Open ID Connect, those, those kinds of things um, here at the ingress controller. So that's a, that's a cool feature. Um, and then finally, the last one I'll mention is a web application firewall can be um, installed here on the ingress controller. And that's a perfect place because that's the single point of entry and exit into and out of this entire Kubernetes cluster. And so that's a great place to define security policies uh, in the form of a web application firewall. So you can, you can integrate a WAF right into the ingress controller. So that's, uh, that's another good, good feature or good thing to think about in terms of the functions of the ingress controller. Okay, so um, again, wanted to, to go over the ingress controller, like what even is this thing? How does it work? Uh, so again, it, it performs the functions that are defined here in this ingress resources, and it can do a lot of other things, just like I just mentioned, um, but, uh, but that, is a, that is a critical part. It's a, it's a key component of this entire Kubernetes discussion uh, or even beyond Kubernetes, it's just any kind of containerized environment. So Kubernetes is the is by far and away the most popular of the you know orchestration um, you know for containerized environments. But you don't have to, it doesn't have to be Kubernetes. So it could be something else. But nonetheless, it would be an ingress uh, you know controller that you would need to implement for all of those functions we talked about today. So hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our Dev Central logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.